Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. In today's Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video, we are going to be talking about gimmicks. Every new generation seems to get a brand new battle gimmick, and Scarlet and Violet are going to be no different. On the Japanese logos for the games, we see a strange looking crystal that looks to be a hint at whatever the gimmick is going to be. That gimmick, of course, is going to get revealed in the next coming months, but before it does, I wanted to go through three gimmicks that have been rumored and floating around the Pokemon community over the last couple of years, and one of them as recently as leaking for Scarlet and Violet specifically, that I do not want to see anywhere near the Pokemon franchise. If there are any gimmicks you guys want to see, let me know down in the comment section below, and let's jump right into things. Every time we get a new Pokemon generation, there's always the discussion of what the big feature is going to be. In Pokemon Generation 4, it was following Pokemon in HeartGold and SoulSilver and in Amity Square in Diamond and Pearl. In Generation 5, it was triple battles and rotation battles, as well as some sort of fusion gimmicks with the two legendary Pokemon and the Husk Kurem of the original dragon. In Generation 6, it was Mega Evolution, a fan favorite, and one that a lot of people, especially in my comment section, wish would return to this day. Sun and Moon was Z-Moves, special moves that each Pokemon had relative to their type and some had their own exclusive typed Z-Move that would be a massive attack in battle. In Generation 8, it was a little different, it was Dynamaxing, and Dynamaxing also had a separate form, which was Gigantamaxing. This was a brand new form a la similar to Mega Evolutions in, in terms of the fact that it changed the design of the Pokemon itself. But Dynamax didn't do that, it just made them bigger, or at least made a big projection of them. So here we are, Generation 9. There is clearly going to be a new gimmick introduced. I really have my doubts that it's going to be the return of an old one. They want to have something in each generation that markets the game in their commercials and to get people to want to buy the game who aren't just mainline Pokemon fans who are going to buy every generation. We might not like it. We might not want them to introduce a brand new battle system altering mechanic every single gen, but this is the way it goes. This is how they differentiate the generations. So it's going to happen. That doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be good or bad. It could be either. And today we're going to discuss some of the ideas that have been thrown around in the last couple of years that I really hope they avoid. These are rumors that existed for previous generations or some that are already coming out through leakers on Reddit and on 4chan and on Twitter for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The first of these is an old school rumor, Pokemon Fusions. This has been a rumor for as long as Pokemon has been a thing, because it's just a natural element of these individual creatures and just kids growing up. Every kid likes to think about, oh, what would happen if Lucario and Garchomp fused together? What would they look like? What would their types be? What would some of the battle changes be in terms of the moves they would get, how powerful they would be? Every kid loves to do this. And there have been Pokemon fusions in the past. We've talked about with Generation 5, Reshiram and Zekrom merging with Kyurem. We've seen in Pokemon Sun and Moon, Solgaleo and Lunala forming with Necrozma. We see this in the Pokemon franchise, but it's never been a wide scale thing where average everyday Pokemon fuse together. There has been a collection of Pokemon fans over the years who have wanted this to happen. I have never been one of them. Maybe it's just because of how I grew up, where Pokemon was the predominant thing that I was into. Yu-Gi-Oh! and Digimon and all of these other franchises with monster collecting elements had fusions. You could fuse together cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! You could fuse together Digimon, I believe, in Digimon, or maybe it was just that they looked large and ridiculous usually. But I never liked the idea of fusing Pokemon together. I think it would, it would mess with the metagame a little too much, it would mess with type combinations, and it would create some incredibly overpowered Pokemon that just don't really fully jive with me. It also doesn't really work, at least in my opinion, in the world of Pokemon, where every single Pokemon has its own unique identity, its own unique reason for existing. What is the reason behind fusing these Pokemon together, and where has it been for eight generations of the Pokemon canon, why have we never seen Pokemon with the ability to fuse? I don't really think you can tie it to a specific region like they'd like to do with Mega Evolution and with Dynamaxing. 
it just feels like a too out there idea. I've never been a fan of it. Pokemon Fusions, I hope, never come wide scale to the Pokemon franchise. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel. Now, of course, subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. But if you do subscribe, please be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. The next mechanic we're going to be talking about is armored Pokemon battle armor. This was a hot rumor during Pokemon Sword and Shield before we got the reveal of Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing. People looked at these massive stadiums. People looked at the fact that they were taking more of a European soccer inspiration football, trying to make Pokemon battles this big region-wide sport. We had the outfits and the uniforms for the trainers when they would go into battle. It felt like they were trying to turn battles into a much bigger event. People on 4chan and on Reddit and on Twitter leaks started talking about the idea of armored Pokemon. Adding physical armor to your Pokemon when you go into battle to give them some kind of stat boost, give some Pokemon some kind of stat reduction while boosting another stat, changing the appearance of the Pokemon as a whole. They've done this in some forms of Pokemon material. In the original movie, Mewtwo was armored and it was enhanced to allow it to focus its psychic abilities. This never, of course, came to the mainline games, but Armored Mewtwo did come to Pokemon Go a couple of years back. This was around the same time that Sword and Shield was coming out, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section. I think these were similar years, maybe 2019, 2018. But it it, it just, it it's, it's similar to Pokemon Fusions in that it felt too Digimon to me. It felt like something that was so out of place with Pokemon. Now, the common counter for people who like this idea is that, well, we already give Pokemon hold items, whether it's charcoal or whether it's scarfs and other battle items to enhance certain aspects of a Pokemon's performance. We sort of already do this. And if Pokemon were in the real world and it was a reality based thing and we handed them something to hold, it would physically change their appearance. It would physically alter how they perform. Armor specifically is just another step in that line. And I mean, I guess that's fair. You could make an argument that it's a natural evolution of the way held items and things currently work in Pokemon, but just equipping armor as this, it, it, it feels, honestly, it feels kind of lazy. The last gimmick that we're going to talk about that I immediately hate, as soon as I saw it leaked, is a third type for Pokemon. If we think about this a little bit deeper than just the cool idea, in theory, of giving a bunch of really awesome Pokemon or maybe some Pokemon that deserve a bit of a boost, a temporary third type. It sounds cool in theory. I'm not going to lie. It, 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 on first glance, I wasn't completely against it. But in talking to a couple people who are competitive players who really enjoy the meta, maybe ignoring Dynamax in the modern meta, a third type really makes things confusing. How do you give this third type? Do certain Pokemon only have the ability to take on a certain third type? Can those types be given to Pokemon at will? Can you make Gengar have an added fire typing? Can you give Empoleon an added dragon typing? What are the hindrances and what are the benefits in terms of when you can give a Pokemon a third type and when you can't? Are there going to be exclusive combinations of types that you can have and ones that you can't? And when you have those typings, does it change the ability of the Pokemon's moves? Do Pokemon move pulls or pools? Are they going to be altered for Generation 9 Pokemon to reflect the third types that they can take on? Does that third typing actually work with the other two typings? Are they going to make sense? One of the things that Pokemon is continually praised for is how their designs and the inspiration for those designs in relation to the typings they give those Pokemon usually make some sort of thematic sense. Even if at first glance you get a Pokemon like Palkia, who is a steel water type, is it steel water type or is it dragon water? It might be dragon water. A typing like that where Palkia having a water type doesn't necessarily make sense on its face. When you dig into the lore of Palkia, the inspiration behind its design, it makes a lot more sense. So are all of the generation nine Pokemon going to be designed where, oh, okay, if it acquires a third typing in battle, it's going to make sense thematically. But if it doesn't have that third typing, is it going to make a lot of sense? If the Pokemon is just out in the world and it has a random fire typing, is it going to, or it can get a random fire typing, 
is it going to necessarily make canonical sense? Adding a third typing just makes things really confusing. If you're asking me how to alter types in Pokemon, my way to go would just be to add a new type. Do what you did in generation six with the fairy type and add a brand new type. Is it the 19th type it would be? Was fairy the 18th or the 16th type? It was one of the two. It's either the 17th or the 19th type. Add some of some, there's a lot of really good videos out there on the internet talking about how things like the sound type should exist, the space type, adding a brand new type and creating a whole new cast of Pokemon to reflect that type and then giving it to previous Pokemon, period makes a lot more sense to me than giving Pokemon that already have two types a third type. Here's my follow-up question to that as well. I don't I don't like this idea. Would Pokemon that currently have one type, would they have the ability to get a second temporary typing? So would it not just be exclusive to Pokemon who only have two typings? Would you give it to some Pokemon who maybe need a little more love, maybe need a little more support, could use an evolution, could use a regional variant? Are you going to give them a second typing, make them non monotype. There's a lot of logistic confusion here. And one of my concerns is that giving Pokemon a third type is going to further incentivize Game Freak to continue with dex cuts. It was a massive controversy in Sword and Shield. People did not like how many Pokemon were cut from the decks, and they did this because of modeling concerns and attack concerns, and they felt like the roster was growing too big. If you're going to create a cast of Pokemon that can acquire a third type, are you going to want to program in as many Pokemon that can get that third type? Is it going to lead to Game Freak cutting the decks again? Because that's something I think we all want to avoid. Those are the three. Those are the three ideas that I really don't love for Sword and Shield, Sword and Shield, for Scarlet and Violet. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, what gimmicks do you want to see? And do you agree with my list of gimmicks I would like to avoid at all costs? Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like so you never miss another upload. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.